Oh, we've been talking about exercising your faith. Exercising your faith. You have, if you do not exercise, you either use it or you lose it. It will atrophy, it will go away. So you better be exercising. And the Bible tells us that we cannot please God unless it is by faith. You cannot please God except by faith. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. So we've been talking about the things of faith that we need to take into our life and make sure that we're using them to the point of where they will grow. We are supposed to grow. We're living organisms, all of us individually and the church as a whole. We need to grow. So we talked about exercising your faith in belief. You need to be believing. You need to be stretching the limits of your belief. God wants you to know more about Him and believe Him in every way. In obedience. It's okay that you've been obedient, but what are you being obedient for today? What is glad... Gla what has God placed before you that right now He's looking for you to take that and be obedient and trust Him in people? Are you exercising your faith in people? Are you encouraging? Are you helping them grow? Are you standing behind them to help them be the best person that God wants them to be? Not tearing them down, not, not gossip, not all that other stuff, but by faith, Trusting in people. By the way, that's what God does. And that's what we need to do. And today we're going to look at what is considered a kind of a, a historical passage. It's just they most people look at it and just say, well, that's just trying to, to, to direct the traffics through the Bible. So we'll kind of know what's going on. But I believe it's very important. Today we're going to talk about exercising your faith in listening. Are you exercising your listening? Is your le learning to listen growing more than it ever has? All year we've been talking about being of one heart and one accord. Amen? That's how God began His church in the book of Acts. One heart and one accord. Our heart's desire is to do God's will. Be one accord with the Father, with the Jesus in the Spirit, and with each other. John 14, 20 says, At that day you will know that I am in the Father, and you in me. And Jesus says, And I in you. So, we're going to look at this passage that's kind of historical. But I, I don't just simply take it at that. I think there's something God wants us to see. God wants to use in our life. I believe it will show God's nature to us. Because God never changes. The Bible says He is the same yesterday. And the God that was the same yesterday is the same today. And as long as time goes on and we step into eternity, God's never going to change. So we need to learn about His nature. We're going to learn about that relationship. Prayer that God gave us because prayer is a relationship. Prayer is not just speaking to God, it's listening to God. So if you have your Bibles, I'm going to ask you if you would to stand in honor of reading God's Word. Acts chapter 11. The words will be there on the screen. And God's Word says, verse 27, in, the, in these days prophets came from Jerusalem to Antioch. Then one of them named Agabus stood up and showed by the Spirit that there was going to be a great famine throughout all the world, which also happened in the days of Claudius Caesar. Not only did he, is he talking about the, the, the words that Agabus said, it's happened, and, and Luke, the writer of the book of Acts, says, and it happened just the way. Uh, it happened in the days of Claudius Caesar. Verse 29, Then the disciples, each according to his ability, determined to send relief to the brethren dwelling in Judea. This they also did, sent it to the elders by the hands of Barnabas and Saul. So there was something that was going to happen. God had wanted them to be a part of it. So he told them beforehand so that they could take up money and send it to the believers in Jerusalem because in that city 
Not all, there's a, most Christians uh, in, in that city than, than any other place at that point in time. And he wanted to make sure that they were ministered to and that they could minister to the community there. So basically something was going to happen, but listen, God spoke because God wanted them to know, not just for information, but for their benefit, for the glory of God, to the work of Jesus, to the building up of the Christians. Let's pray. Now, Father, we thank you for all of your word. All of it's important. Father, I pray that on this Mother's Day, and we're very grateful for all of our moms that you gave us. You gave us life, and you gave us those wonderful, tender, serving moms to take care of us. And I, I thank you for my mom, the Christian mom that I had who prayed for me. And Lord, I don't think I would be standing where I am today if she had not been kneeling before you. So Lord, I, I know all things work together for your will, for your purpose, and your power. And I pray, Lord, that we would be, by faith, people who listen. Not only listen, but hear and do what you'd have us to do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> God spoke. And by the way, God still speaks. Now when you look at this scripture, there was a a prophet by the name of Agabus who came down. But don't let that say, well, that was him that has nothing to do with me. The same Holy Spirit that was in him is the same Holy Spirit, if you receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, that lives within you. The very same one. Jesus would go away and pray to the Father. And he would hear from the Father. And he would know what his assignment was for that particular day. Same Holy Spirit in him is the same Holy Spirit in you. When he left, he told us that we would do greater things than he did because of that Holy Spirit that would reside within us. Now, there are many ways that God speaks. And by the way, one way that he speaks is through his word. God spoke through men who wrote down the inscription the inspired, infallible, no errors in it whatsoever, God's Word for us. It's not everything God knows, but it's everything He wanted us to know. And if we'll listen to it, if we'll trust it, if we'll believe it, if we'll open up our ears as we read it, it won't just be a book. God will speak through His words. Of all the things in this world today, this is the only thing that will last forever. The Word of God, your soul, and the actions of our actions. Those are the three things that will have consequences and that will go forward. But understand, this is God's best for us. God shows us His truth. God shares His will with us. We used to sing a song and it went something like this. I'm not singing it today because my throat hurts, but it goes, and he walks with, a, with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me that I am his own. It shows us his will, what he wants to do in our lives, his purpose, his plans. In John chapter 14, in verse number 16, the Bible says, this is Jesus speaking, and he says, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, another comforter. The word is paraclete. It means the one who will come along beside you. And around Christmas time, we use the word Emmanuel, God with us. If you have listened to the Holy Spirit, if you have repented of your sins, if you've called upon Christ and asked Him to come into your heart and save you, to separate you from your sins as far as the east is from the west, God says, I will send my spirit to you. He said He will give you another helper that He may abide with you. 
That means he will stay with you forever. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. John chapter 15, verse 26 says this, but when the helper, that's the same paraclete, when that comforter, when the Holy Spirit of God comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, look at these last five words, he will testify of me. He will speak to you what I have for you. Now look, look up here. That's a promise. And God can't break his word. When the Holy Spirit comes, don't, you, don't say, oh, that, that's for preacher Brian or, or that's for sister saint, right? That's for brother believing over there. No, no, no. If you have allowed the Holy Spirit to come into your life, if you have believed in Christ that he came from heaven, that he died on the cross of Calvary for you, if the wisest thing that you could ever do is receive Jesus Christ in your life. But if you've done that, the gift that he will give you is the Holy Spirit. <coughs> he will come. He will be with you. He will abide with you. The Spirit of truth. He will testify. Sometimes, I love this illustration. I say, sometimes I just need to run to the Father and crawl up into his laps and just put my arms around him and squeeze his neck and let him put his arms of love around me and bring me close and whisper peace into my ear. You ever felt that way? That's not just for little children. I'm 60. That's a good place to be. That peace that goes beyond all understanding. When you have questions, when you have doubts, when you have worries, when troubles come. Anybody in here not have troubles or pain or worry or doubt? Anybody in here good all the time? Anybody need a, a quick pathway to get to the Father and let Him speak peace over you? Oh, the blessings of that. John 16, verse number 12 says this. I have... Many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. If he told us everything at one time, we couldn't understand it. We couldn't accept it. But he says, however, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority. Whatever he hears, he will speak. The father will say, tell them this. And the Spirit will speak, and He will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for He will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore I said that He will take of mine. He speaks strength and understanding. He speaks forgiveness and kindness. He speaks wisdom and knowledge. His ways are so much beyond our ways. His thoughts, so much beyond what we could come up with. And yet he says, I, I'm not jealous. I want to bestow upon you that which is mine. That's why he has heaven. Everything that is heaven is a, is a, reflection of all the perfection of the goodness and the love of God. And he wants you to have that. But as you walk into this world, a world of sin, a world of brokenness, where the Bible tells us the prince, the ruler of this world today is the one who stood against God, Satan, Lucifer, the devil himself. And he has a time. And if you don't think it's working, you're not looking. If you haven't heard him come to you and tempt you, come and ask you to do things that 
you shouldn't do. It's He will encourage you to be angry and to get even. Unforgiving. But we're not to hear His voice. We're to hear God's voice. John 10, 27 says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. When my dad was in the house, I might not even have known he was in the house, but when I heard that voice, now, can I tell you, my dad was a preacher. I didn't want to be a preacher. God called me into that kicking and screaming. Not really. When I finally realized that's what God wanted me to do, I surrendered to it. But I, as I stand up here, and my kids were in it there, out there. That's what I had to deal with. My dad would be up there preaching, and I would be back there acting the fool. You know, when you're young, you're pretty stupid, or at least I was. Now, we had wooden benches that did not have cushions on them. We had a wooden floor that sloped to the front that did not have carpet. So I was so smart, I would play marbles in church. <laughs> Sitting in the pew, looking at my dad preaching behind my back. My buddy was over here, and we would clank them marbles, and however many of them went across the line, they were mine. And then they would clank theirs back, and what they got was theirs. We played keepers. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? Now, you see, I, was, I, I didn't realize that sound traveled. And sometimes we would be acting a fool, and the marble would take wind and run and hit the floor. Now, I'd be sitting in the back, and all of a sudden you'd hear, kick, tick, 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 tick. And then you would hear it roll. Slowly roll to the front, and something would happen. My father would stop preaching, and the whole church heard the roll. And his voice would change. The man standing up preaching the love of God, his voice would change, and he would say, Brian, that meant a few things. That means you better quit it. You better get up and go sit by your mama. And you better be good for the rest of the service because afterwards I'm going to tan your hide. <laughs> there have been times in my life I was very grateful that my father tanned my hide. There's also times that I was very grateful that he spoke very tender words. But today's Mother's Day, and how many of y'all remember running to your mom to get that comfort? The love? Of course, some of y'all have moms, you got a bigger beating from your mom than you did your dad. I just got a big, I got a beating from everybody. I was that kind of a kid. But I want to talk to you real quickly about when the Spirit begins to speak to our minds. He speaks to us through the Scripture. We've already stated that. But He speaks to us in prayer. Now, prayer is a two-way conversation. Most of the time when people get down to pray, what they do is they get down and say, Our Father who art in heaven, and then they start telling God all their troubles, all their sorrows, what we think he ought to be doing like we know better than him. When he ought to do it. And sometimes we even threaten God. Now, Lord, if, if you want me to believe in you, you better do this. Don't act so self-righteous. You know you do. But I tell you what is overlooked often. Usually when we have our prayers, we'll say amen and we'll get up and go do something else. 
But prayer is not like a radio that blares one way. Prayer is us speaking, but us also listening. So let me give you a word. Be quiet. Tell your mind to hush. Now, I understand that prayer is to be done all the time. It can be done in your mind. It can be done with your voice. It can be done kneeling. The older you get, the less that happens. It can be done while you're driving. It can be done while you're walking. It can be done while you're sitting still. But, but there comes a point in time where you need to just shut your mind down and let the Lord speak. Sometimes he'll begin the conversation. Sometimes a thought will come to you. A person will come to you. A situation will come to you. And you can talk back and forth with the Lord and he will fill your spirit. He does it as you read the word, but he can do it any other time. We can have what John 15 calls an abiding conversation. Sometimes he gives revelations. <clears throat> you ever heard something you knew was God? Um, when I was, um, I was taking some classes from a, a, a seminary in Ashland, Ohio, and uh, drove up there to Ashland, Ohio, and was taking a, a, a class, a, a mini-mester, and they were stretching me. How many, how many of y'all know you go to school to learn? Where they were teaching me things about the Spirit that I didn't know, and I needed to know. And as I was sitting in class, we broke up into small groups of about eight, and uh, what they wanted us to do was to learn to listen to the Holy Spirit. Then he said, uh, he called one person to stand up and he called the other person to stand, the other person was me. And, and we stood up and he said, one of you, God's going to give a word to speak to the other one about something that's going on in their life. Talk about being put under pressure. And I'm just standing there and I'm like, okay, God, if you've got something you want to say, now, this is what I found out. Everybody else in that room was saying, Brian, speak. They weren't saying it out loud, because if they had, I told them to be quiet. But they just said, Brian, it's you. Brian, it's you. Speak. Lord, tell him. Never experienced this before in this way. And I said, Lord, if you want to stretch me, And by faith, I just started speaking. And I saw the look on this man's face. And I went on over a minute talking about this man, about his family, about his daughter, what she was going through. And I, I just kept going through those different things. And folks, I'm not that smart. And he said, he didn't know I was a pastor. He just called me Brian. He said, Brian, everything you said is exactly right. And there was a moment that went over that whole room. And there was a moment that went over my heart. I had never done that before. He doesn't do that all the time. But like the little kids saying this morning, there's nothing that our God can't do. And a lot of times we ask, questions of God and God either says yes God either says no or he says wait not yet but God will always answer your prayers but there's some things that we need to learn that if we will ask in this abiding relationship God can speak now don't just hear everything God speaks in visions. God speaks in dreams. One of the church members asked me today about a dream, and I looked at him and said, I don't know. Sometimes he speaks in, in, in just fellowship. Have y'all ever told God a joke? Oh, come on. 
I can't tell jokes. I might say something that may sound funny to somebody, but I can't tell jokes. I'm the worst joke teller in the world. But sometimes being the Lord, I was taking a prayer walk one day, and I should have done this, but this Sunday was too busy, too many things happening. I was take, taking a prayer walk, and I said, Lord, what do you want to say? And I looked over, and I saw a flower, and I promise you I saw the face of Groucho Marx in that flower. <laughs> and I thought, Lord... You want to speak to me like Groucho Marx? Next Sunday, I'll show you that picture. Because I guarantee you, you'll think it looks like Groucho Marx too. Look, it's not got to be just serious stuff all the time. It's just a loving, kind relationship. But 1 John chapter 4, verse 1 says this, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God. Because many, say that word with me, many false prophets have gone out into the world. All those fallen angels who sided with Lucifer, we call them demons. They're out there. Some people are not following God. Don't listen to them. And sometimes, I don't care if you're a Christian or not, your own old fleshly will <coughs> will tell you things. And you need to shut that down. What you need to listen to, you need to know God's voice and you need to know the enemy's voice. And if it's God's voice, say yes. If it's God's character, say yes. If it comes from His nature, say yes. If it's not of His nature, say no. Galatians 5.16 says this, Walk in the Spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Galatians 5.22 says this, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Verse 25 says, If we live in the Spirit... Let us also walk in the Spirit. So if you're hearing something and it's speaking love towards you or toward another, amen. If it's bringing you peace, if it's telling you to be long-suffering, patient and kind, amen. If it's bubbling up something that is not of love, stop it. How many of you beat yourself up for your past sins? Regret. Wish you wouldn't, wish, wish you, you think about it all the time. Why did I do that? And you think, oh, that's the Holy Spirit. No. Look, why would God bring something to you that through the blood of Jesus has been forgiven and forgotten? If you're feeling something that tells you that you're bad, that you're no good, if it's fueling your insecurities, tell it to hush. In the name of Jesus Christ, tell it to hush because that's not coming from the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God will bring you to the Father. He will produce love. Husbands and wives, when you get cross and you hear from God, it will, bring, it will be to bring you together, not to separate you. Men, it will tell you to love your wife as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. That's scripture. That's truth. It's a promise. Women, come and heal. Don't hurt. Satan always attacks relationships. Y'all ever heard me say that before? He always comes to divide and conquer. Don't let him. Know the voice of God. Now here's the thing. It's not coming from that commentator on TV. It's not coming from that other person that wants your job. It's not coming from that person who didn't get their way so they're attacking you. But there's a still, small voice. 
a whisper. And it hits the tuning fork of your heart. And you say, that's right. As a pastor, I have to counsel a lot. And a lot of the people who come to me are just beat up. But they're not beat up by Christ. They're not down by the world. And God doesn't want that. He says, I'll, spend, I'll send you the paraclete, the comforter, the peacemaker, the spirit of truth. It's a voice of love. Satan's a deceiver. Don't listen to him. But lastly, let me say this. Praise God, he comes and speaks with conviction. If you're doing something that you're not supposed to be doing, and you're a Christian, you're a believer, you're a follower of Christ, you better pray that the Holy Spirit says, quit it. My dad used to say it this way, him. I don't know how to spell that. Nobody ever had to define it. I knew exactly what that meant. Stop it. If the Holy Spirit comes within you and goes, hey, uh, you know what you need to do? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, let me move quick. Amen? If we could say no to, the Holy, to temptation by the power of the Holy Spirit, how better our life would be. The quicker we can move it away. The quicker we can say, that's not of my benefit. But maybe there's someone here today who's heard the loving voice of God saying, I love you. I will always love you. I want to save you. But there's this thing in the middle, it's called sin. And I can't have a relationship with sin. I'm a holy God. So I made a way. My son went down there and for no sin that he committed, he was crucified on the cross of Calvary. He shed the perfect blood to be the perfect sacrifice. He died, he was buried, but he rose again. He's at the right hand of the Father. And if you'll let him, if you'll hear his voice, the Bible calls the word wooing you, drawing you. One of the greatest regrets I've ever had was I, I, I prayed that I wish that I had said yes sooner. When the Holy Spirit would come, and oftentimes it would happen in church, oftentimes it would be at the end during the invitation, and that desire to be forgiven and receive the blessings of God to have my sins separated as far as the east is from the west. But there was something I, I, I was holding back. I didn't want to listen. But in every Christian relationship, I'm going to say this again, in every Christian relationship, it begins with us hearing the voice of God, the wooing, the conviction, and we make the decision between our heart and God's heart to believe Him and trust Him and ask Him to do for us what He promised He would do that only He could do. And we become a child of God. The wisest thing in all the world. I've seen it. There's a, someone on Facebook that posted something and they said they came to our church service. I did not know this. They came to our church service and I was preaching. And somewhere during the invitation, y'all know me. Those of you who've been coming, you know me. I don't try to embarrass anybody. I would never. But somewhere in that invitation, I, I, I said, someone here 
needs to get saved. Someone needs to come down to this altar. And what I didn't know was that person said, if you'll personally invite me. And I spoke. And he came down. I think he was just needing a little encouragement. God doesn't twist arms. But he does speak your name. He calls you by name. That person said, I don't know that I would have ever gone if the pastor hadn't said that. By the way, he wasn't saying it to me. He was just posting it on Facebook. He did tag me and put my name in it. I didn't even know. If God knows every hair on your head, if He knows every thought in your heart, don't you think He knows how to call you from where you are to where you need to be? Don't you think He knows how to call you from brokenness to healing? Don't you think He, needs, he knows how to get you from a place of bewilderment to a place of truth? He sent the Spirit of truth. He loves you. Would you let Him love you? 